No, I saw there's two of them. <coughs> oh, at first it was about what the most change of them. I read it a little deeper. It was just how. Yeah. Then there's this executive session at the bottom that you know, have to have all those questions ready. Right? <laughs> well, you might have some very to You might have some very to Right. Call to the order of the Madison County Board of Education meeting on May the 12th, 2022. Uh, first order is our vision. Ms. Burford, can you bring yes. our vision? Sure. <coughs> Madison County Schools, in partnership with the community, strives to equip educators and students with the skills to lead by example, develop and speak with a unique voice, and explore their academic curiosity to make a positive impact on our community and world. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have some recognition. Uh, tonight, we are recognizing some of our school-based health service professionals. Phil? Right, yes. <clears throat> we have honored several groups of employees for their work during the challenging times presented by COVID-19 pandemic. As we've resumed this school year to some sense of normalcy, the challenges of the aftermath of the pandemic have shown themselves to be just intense at times. Our schools have been faced with the task of, in addition to classroom instruction, meeting the continued uh, social emotional needs of our young people and providing services to our most vulnerable families. As attention has turned to the recovery from what we inevitably lost during the past couple of years, we have seen our educators and staff are up to the challenge. We are inspired by so many ways uh, our school-based health service professionals, including 21 speech therapists, five occupational therapists, and one physical therapist, have sent us audience comments regarding agenda items. We have one, Ms. Susan Centra. Uh, she wants to speak on 7A and 7F. <coughs> Good evening. How are you guys? Good. Thank you for taking the time to... to listen to us tonight. My name is Susan Sintra and I'm the president of the Madison County Education Association. And this is Keely Green, our MCEA secretary. There are two issues on the agenda that we would like to address collectively this evening. Those are action items A and action item F. Um, our concern for these two issues comes down to the financial obligation they entail, that being the amount that will be allocated to these schools for these positions. As you all are aware, the General Assembly gave pay increases to every state employee except educators, and by doing so, they have passed that responsibility down to you all. This is a job that we know is increasingly difficult and quite honestly has been unfairly and unnecessarily placed in your laps. But it is the situation we find ourselves in, which brings us to you this evening. Since 2008, teachers and classified staff in Madison County have fallen drastically behind in our net income as we have not been given consistent cost of living increases. And while recent efforts to improve our salary schedules have occurred, they've remained stagnant for too long, all this while our benefits have decreased and health insurance costs have increased. We have come to a place now where our teachers are fleeing the county and even worse, the profession, because the high demands and low pay are no longer something we are able to live on or live with. According to the Kentucky Department of, Ed of Education, Madison County ranks 73rd in the state in certified employee pay. And we neighbor a county that ranks fourth. 
If a teacher decided to travel to Fayette County, the increase in pay would be tens of thousands of dollars at any step on the salary schedule. In fact, we have two veteran teachers who are married, and if they decided to go to, reti go to and retire from Fayette County schools, they would make upwards of $1 million more over the course of a 30-year retirement than if they stayed in Madison County. That's a difficult decision to make at the end of your career. In Madison County in the past 11 years, our average salary has only increased by 8%, while inflation rates have been upwards of 28%. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, for teachers in Madison County to have the same buying power as we did in 2011, we would have to receive a 17.8% raise. While national problems with inflation are affecting everyone, teachers in this county have suffered from decreased buying power for well over a decade. Because we truly believe that Madison County wants the best for our students and we work together diligently to provide that, MCEA is asking for three changes to our salary that will begin to get us back on the right track. While we know that a 17.8% increase would do that, we are asking for the same 8% increase across the board for certified employees that was given to state employees by the legislature and a 10% increase for our classified employees. Whether it be subs, bus drivers, paras, or cafeteria staff, custodial staff, we have all felt the sting of shortages with our classified employees. And while the board has made efforts to increase their pay, the reality is, is that we are just not competitive with other higher paying jobs these folks can get. Along with this percentage increase, we are asking that another step be added to our certified salary schedule. While last year the board approved a $1,500 increase to each step, and this helped our lower, lower end employees, it did little to nothing for our mid to high end. These are our most well-trained and experienced educators, but they are also the people who are the most attractive to other districts that are more aggressive in attracting talent and expertise than we are. On our current salary schedule now, there is no increase for five years between 15 and 20. We are asking that another step be added with a $2,000 increase at, eight, at year 18. Finally, we ask the board to commit to a 2% annual cost of living increase every year for all employees. We began to see our pay decline when our cost of living increase stopped, happening back in 2008. Since then, we have fallen consistently behind and are now faced with making up all of this ground. We need to protect ourselves from, being, from ever being in the position again, and committing to a cost of living increase is a step in that direction. It is unfortunate that the responsibility of this change is placed into your laps by our legislator when the state had the funding and chose not to use it for our educators. Like many other districts that have already proved, or sorry, have already provided significant increases for their educators, we know that Madison County Board of Education understands that teachers are the most important factor in student achievement. And if we want our students to be successful, we must retrain, retain, attract, and most importantly, value our teachers so that we stay competitive in a vastly declining market of education professionals. Our students in Madison County are worth it, and so our teachers are as well. We are all watching the multiple districts that are supporting their teachers by providing well-earned, long-overdue pay increases and look forward to seeing that same support from Madison County Schools. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next up on our agenda is our consent agenda. These items are items that the board sees regular and we're very familiar with them. Items must be approved on the consent agenda are the minutes of April 14th, 2022, claims, the director of the superintendent's personnel actions, leaves of absences, the Clark Moore's middle school renaissance trip to Kings Island in Ohio on May the 18th, 2022, cheer mat surplus, food service surplus, and technology surplus. Any questions? Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. A motion by Ms. Cool. I'll second. A second by Ms. Brock. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next, we have our monthly reports. Tonight, we have math coaches Sandy Cablin and Abby Brown. I'm actually going to go first. Okay. Well, Ms. Hunter. have a PowerPoint we're going to show. Um, I wanted to come first because I'm going to give just an overview of our um, American Recovery Plan, our ESSER funds. Um, Mr. Woods gave um, a very detailed report last month of the financial 
um, situation of that. And if you guys remember all those different um, green circles and slices of the pie and all those things, uh, fantastic job. So what I wanna do is kinda take one of those pieces of the pie out, the instruction part, and talk very briefly about that and give an update of that. Um, and I'm gonna talk about some of the evidence-based um, frameworks we've been using this past year. Um, then the math coaches are gonna come up this month and kind of show you guys what it looks like inside the schools, inside the classrooms, um, a real picture of that. And then next month, our academic coaches are gonna come up and tell you a little bit about what that works looks like. But um, I wanna say, um, this is the last time I'm gonna talk to you guys. And so I might get a little emotional, I'm gonna try real hard not to, but um, I have chosen um, to spend the last part of my career in Madison County, because I've been to one of those other counties um, and started there, but I have chosen um, to spend the last 14, I think it is, years here, and I wouldn't want to be any other place, because the teachers, the principals, and the students of this district um, can't be beat. And I just want to thank you um, for your support. And so I want to show you a little bit um, about the work that has been done this last year. Because when we talked um, about this time last year, about the summer school work that was gonna be done, the first part mm -hmm. of this ESSER plan that's been called several different things. And so officially, this is the academic recovery plan, but it's how our ESSER funds are gonna be used. So we said it's gonna be different and it's gonna be hard. But I wanna tell you, our principals, our teachers, our students, um, we're up for the task. So we talked a little bit about that. So go ahead and hit the next slide. I got the clicker. There we go. So summer school was our first part. And we looked at our data from that and we talked about that. And so we had um, a different kind of summer school last year than we'll have this year. Because last year we had all kinds of kids who had not been in school. We had those option two, those option three kids who hadn't been in school for a while. Um, this year, it will look a little bit different. It's still very targeted, it's still very intense because we still have some of that learning loss that needs to be addressed. But this past year, this school year, my goodness, and I'm gonna show you a little peek at the end of what we've done. But summer school is still one of our um, interventions we're using to address that loss. Um, MTSS, over the last few months, you guys have heard that term, multi-tiered systems of support from our principals who have um, come up and spoken to you guys. Um, this is where we look at all kinds of behavioral data, our um, SEL, social and emotional learning data, we also look at academic data there too, but that's where we look at that and that's where we address those needs because we're learning over and over and over again. We have to meet those needs really before we can address all of our academic needs. So that is another huge intervention that we're putting into place um, to meet the needs of those students. Um, tier one instruction, here's what that means. Um, that means it doesn't matter where kids come to us if we're two grade levels below, three grade levels below, every student has access to on grade level standards. So if you're sitting in a third grade classroom, an eighth grade classroom, that's the standard you're gonna get, even if you're a little behind. Because we're also going to address that too. Because if we don't do that on grade level standard, you're gonna keep falling behind and falling behind and falling behind. So we've really focused on that tier one instruction this year. Data systems, we're collecting data so that we can say, what, what do we need to do? We're looking at it, we're very intentional about that. And then our professional learning communities. That's just where we all come to the table and talk about what we're gonna do. That's just a, a place where we come to the table and say, okay, here's what we're gonna do. What are you doing that's working? What are you doing that's working? What can we share? How can we collaborate to meet the needs of our students? And how can we support each other as we do that? And then student engagement strategy. Those are really gonna be the things you're gonna listen for as you um, hear our coaches talk 
because that's what's really, because if you think about what's happened the last few years where students have been a little less than engaged, that's what we've really been trying to focus on. And then those essential skills and standards, not that all of our skills and standards aren't important, but when we've had the years that we've had, sometimes we have to look at them and say, okay, what are the very most important standards we need to focus on and skills to get us where we need to be. So that's the kind of work that we've been doing. So I do want to give you just a little sneak peek at some of our data because it's pretty exciting. Because when, when we talked at the first of the year, we were like, oh my goodness, how are we ever going to get there? But we have some already data I wanted to share with you. Now here's what I want you to keep in mind. Not every single kid's been tested yet. So this is just a preview. Okay, so here's math. So, so here's what I want you to think about. The one on the bottom is um, where we started at the beginning of the year. Green is, you can read it right there, green is um, mid, above grade level, early on grade level. And then we go to um, on grade level, to grade levels below. So that's where we started. And then you can see where we are right now. Look at that growth, look at that progress that we've made. That's hard work, intentional focus and practice from our principals, our students, our teachers, every single day. And then reading. Look at that. Look at that. That's where we are. And again, just a little preview because I think it's going to get even better. So our math coaches are going to come up and talk to us and give us even um, more of a picture of the specifics of what's happening. Thank you, Dr. Hunter. Yep. It's very good stuff. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. How are you all? Good, how are y'all? I'm Sandy Cablin, um, one of the coaches. And I'm Abby Brown, another coach. Thank you for having us this afternoon. Over, Thank you. <laughs> Over the last two years, the roles of teachers, students, coaches, and math instruction have looked much different than in the past. Now, all five coaches have resumed our coaching roles, roles full time. Students have finally been able to work together in groups and use manipulatives collaboratively. Teachers have been able to foster an in-person, student-centered environment and build a culture of student ownership in their learning. The MDC guiding principles are deeply rooted in best practices, not only for math instruction, but for all subjects. Thinking about formative assessment, we help learners answer the following questions. Where am I going? Where am I right now? And how am I going to get there? Learning becomes easier when students can understand what goal they are trying to achieve, the purpose of achieving that goal, and the specific attributes of success. This creates um, students' commitment to the learning. Many of our teams this year have been working on clearly articulating concise learning targets, referencing the why, and the success criteria for how to be successful. Given students a comparison of where they are and where they want to be gives them the power to know if and when there's a gap. And this creates that cognitive dissonance in their own learning. The brain then becomes motivated to close that gap. We use the students and the teachers um, use the standards of mathematical practices as the success criteria to set their own, to set and achieve their own goals for learning. Achieving these goals feel good, feels good for the students and forms a positive growth mindset. The coaches um, use the five strategies for assessment for learning, clarifying and sharing learning intentions, engineering effective discussions, questions, and tasks, providing feedback to move learning forward, activating students as owners of their own learning and activating students as instructional resources for one another. We want to provide them a starting point of success, give them a little bit more success, and then stretch to move their learning even further. 
um, and we try not to GPS or tell them exactly how to go or where to go, but we want to create a productive struggle so that students um, create, get that um, not procedural fluency, conceptual understanding mm -hmm. to that way they can problem solve in the future. And that ties in with careers later. You know, that's really what um, businesses are looking for, kids who are problem solvers. So that's what we strive to do. Um, we wanted to show you some examples of the impact MDC's having in our schools. And so the best way for us to do that is to give you some samples of data. Um, we use two data collecting tools, the Otis tool and the NDC tool. And uh, we usually do that two times a month with teachers. And it's important because it gives the teachers something to look at, to talk about, and then something to set goals <coughs> with. So this particular one was an elementary school. It was a first year school in the NDC program. And so they had their walkthroughs to collect evidence of those practices that um, Abby was talking about. And this particular school on their first meeting noticed that clear instruction was only at around 0.5 out of a score of two. And clear instruction includes a lot of things. It includes posting the learning target. It includes um, referencing that learning target to keep to keep the um, learning focused. It includes students understanding why they are learning what they're learning, teachers giving clear expectation. It's very all encompassing. And so this school of teachers decided that that's what they wanted their focus to be at the beginning. And once they learned how in depth that one section is, they ended up staying with that over time, over the whole year. <coughs> and we did things like um, I, the coaches modeled in their classrooms um, what clear instruction should look like. We had PDs on success criteria, on teacher clarity, um, on what else did we have? There was another one. Oh, and success criteria, what that looks like for students. Um, and then they had their coaching sessions every month on top of that. And you can see as they stayed with it, there was a very clear um, rise in that data. That green bar is at the end of, of March, I think. And their MDC data, which is not there, they had reached 100% in some of those smaller things that, that are included in clear instruction. Um, one other thing that was interesting about this school is by the end, the teachers started realizing how closely related clear instruction is to CCI, which is another one of the district's um, initiatives. And so I heard that they were already talking about um, how those two things were related and what that should look like the next year. So um, another elementary school. This particular school has been in the work over a year and um, you can see that 4C that's from the NBC tool and it's talking about students having the opportunity to reflect on their learning and this particular school noticed even after more than a year's time that was staying really low and so in February of this year they decided that that was going to be their goal and the coach worked with them pretty intensely through that full month. They had PDs every week. Um, the, t the coach went and modeled in every single classroom, worked with the students, and um, when they did their data collection at the end, you can see that uh, self-reflection was evidenced in 100% of the classrooms at that time, which was great. Um, this is another area that is closely tied with CCI. So um, in order for them to be successful in self-reflection, they have to go through that whole CCI process. Um, what was most interesting to me about this school was you would think at 100%, the teachers would say, great, we met the goal. We're going to change our goal for next time. But they decided not to do that. They said they knew that they were very intentional that month 
and everyone made sure that they did reflection, but they wanted to continue that goal into the beginning of next year so they could make it a natural part of their instruction. So we're seeing, hearing some really insightful things from the teachers when we have our meetings and discuss data and set goals. Um, one change for the next year, you know, this was our first year really kind of getting back in the swing of things, and the thing that we saw the most benefit from was when we could get into the teachers' classrooms, work with the students, do things collaboratively with the teachers. And so one of the changes for next year we decided on was um, we're stretched really thin to do two walkthroughs per month to collect evidence. So we said in lieu of one of them, a teacher could um, decide to do a collaborative event with one of the coaches. And there's just some different things that might look like. We might plan a lesson with them. We might work on um, assessment planning with them. We might co-teach a class. Um, we might sit down with a teacher and watch a video of another teacher teaching because that's happening a lot. A lot of teachers are videoing themselves and sit down with the teacher and the coach and look at best practices and what we see in that video, point those things out. And we want to continue the modeling, the coaches modeling in the classrooms because that's been very, very beneficial. And then some teachers are, they request PD, like, and there's just no time for that. So we said in lieu of that walkthrough, we could do a PD hour either after school or during planning where the, where the teacher says, I really want some guidance on this one area and the coach and the, that teacher would sit down and really look in depthly at that. Okay, and the last way that we thought would be good for you all to see how it's impacting classrooms is um, to have some of the teachers come with us. So this one is from Abby's school. She's going to read it and while she does we have two other teachers that are just going to come up and share a brief testimony. This is from Courtney Sanders, who teaches third grade at Kit Carson. <clears throat> Through the implementation of MDC this year in my classroom, I have been able to see growth in all students. Some students come in thinking they will never succeed in math, but through the work with the MDC, they realize they can think about math in many different ways, and we can learn from each other and the different ways we all view math. Students are able to make connections through pictures, numbers, number lines, etc., and talk with each other about how we solve various math problems. It engages all types of learners and helps challenge and engage all learners. Coaching has helped me teach various ways to reach all students. The coaching has also helped me see that all students can be successful in math by providing activities that are geared towards their learning styles. The coaching led me to provide rigorous lessons where students make lots of exploration in math this year. Good evening. My name is Penny Wilbur and I'm a special education teacher at Waco Elementary. Although I have been teaching for over 20 years, this is my first year working with the Math the Collaborative team. MDC has one of the biggest impacts on my teaching career. This system-based program has helped me take my teaching and my students' learning to the next level. In my opinion, as a classroom teacher, part of MDC's strength is the continuous year-round support that the district provides through coaching, training, support systems, and data reflection. With this ongoing support, not only have I grown as a teacher, but my students and the school has grown. One area of learning that MDC has impacted the most in my classroom is through teacher-student clarity. This has been a game changer for the way I teach. My students and I have a bigger understanding not only of the why and what I am teaching, excuse me, the what and how I am teaching, but the why behind their learning. Having a better understanding of what, how, and why behind math concepts and learning targets has allowed my special education students to gain a greater understanding and an ability to comprehend. This in-depth understanding paired with student reflective thinking, data analysis, and math practices 
has changed the culture of the classroom to allow students to take even more ownership of their learning. It is no longer Ms. Wilbur's classroom. It is our math class. It has been an amazing journey to be part of MDC. I enjoy watching my students take more active roles in their learning. Good evening. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes to share some things regarding Madison County Schools Math Design Collaborative. Um, I, didn't reckon, I didn't announce who I was, so I'm Angela Howard. I teach second grade at Silver Creek Elementary. Um, this is my first year as a part of our building implementation team. At the beginning of the year, I knew I had my work cut out for me as I was taking on something completely new and unknown. All I knew for certain was that I loved my students and if there's something out there I can do to make it better for them, that's what I want to do, so please show me how I could do that. This year has been full of learning. Throughout the year, I've participated in coaching sessions, PLCs, and learned to dig deep into the data that my students were producing as a result of my instruction. As the year has progressed, I've worked so hard, and my children have worked so hard to really facilitate all the ideas and suggestions that our school's math coach has given me. Given me. My classroom kids worked hard as well and always welcomed these ideas when I would come to them and explain what it is we're going to try. Together we've built a room full of learning, data-driven instruction with student-led discussion and mathematical explanations I never dreamed were possible in second grade. We're wrapping up this year with strong math data and a class full of kids that ask if we can do math all day long. It has been simply amazing to watch my kids take my goals such as wait time and self-assessment and roll that into other subject areas as well. If you come by our class, the kids can tell you all about what they're learning and why they are learning it. To put it simply, it's been an unbelievable year of goal setting, growth, and fun. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're tearing up over here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for letting us speak. Thank you. No, thank you all very much. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say last month, we, a few of us went to Kit Carson, and we saw firsthand how these kids were working with those little blocks doing math. Remember, they was doing the addition. And I mean, we're not talking one plus one. I mean, they was doing like 400 and something and 300 and something. Yeah. My personal daughter is in a first grade class at Kit Carson, and during one of the walkthroughs, um, her teacher asked something, and they're like, the mathematicals. And she keeps saying that she's a better mather than she is a reader, which she's an amazing reader as well. But, you know, it, it amazes me. I love data, but I like to see data that's used. Yeah. And by these results, you are obviously taking that data. Instead of having an end of the year assessment and then trying to go fix things, you are addressing the issues and obviously being very, very effective with it. And Kudos. I mean, what a great job. We love seeing <coughs> results like this. Uh, I took notes. The other thing I love to see is when you give ownership of those goals to the students mm -hmm. because then they take pride in what they're doing. And I think that's so important for them right now. Having come through all of this, they see their goals, they're achieving those goals. And, you know, thank you all for doing that. I think. You know, it's it's a boost to our, not only are they learning, but it's a boost to their esteem. And you know, it's it's something that we really need to uh, to work on. It's just y'all are doing a great job. We want to develop those problem solvers instead of that learned helplessness. Yeah, and I love what you said. It's not your classroom; it's math class. Yeah. So everybody mm -hmm. has ownership of it, I, and I, that stuck with me, and I really, really like that. Great job. I love that they're videotaping themselves. That's not easy. No one likes to see themselves. And then share it with others. That's difficult. And that's impressive and very, that's. We have one school that every single one of the teachers is videotaping themselves. And then they're meeting as a group and discussing. And so you know they have a lot of that's hard. efficacy yeah. yes. and trust to be willing to do yes. that. Yes, I love that. Thank you all again. Appreciate it. Uh, next up, we have our construction report, Mr. Tony Thomas. That's hard to follow. I know. There's a lot of instruction going on in Madison County. Um, consequently, a lot of construction going on as well. 
Um, so I'll start someplace different this time. A good evening, by the way. Um, I will start at Clark Moore's this time, and of course we can get some a feeling of some finality to the concession stand and locker rooms um, out by the, uh, the the baseball field. Um, so you can see there they're in pretty good shape. If I turn around from that vantage point, you see the new band room addition that is also facing out towards the back 40, as you could say there, at Clark Moore's. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you can see the cooling tower on the right and the big new kitchen addition there to the left. Uh, they're finishing up the masonry on that, so good progress there. Um, you can see the new brick here, and they've, they're, they're preparing for the new metal panel above. This is the back of the cafeteria. You can see the new sidewalk and the new stairs to the, to the back of the cafeteria area there. And speaking of that panel, you can, you can see the darker bronze color up higher there that's going to be the, the new panel. It still doesn't have the trim replaced up top there, but you can see it's going to be a, a, a much better color there. Here's uh, using the cafeteria inside. There's a, there's, there's a few more eyes to dot and T's to cross in that cafeteria, but they wanted to go ahead and use it while they could this year. And um, in a couple of weeks, of course, the contractors will get it back and they'll, they'll finish up there. Uh, one of the classrooms um, being used now. If we go into the media center um, area, where there's been a lot of demolition renovation, you can already see that they've done some demolition and are starting uh, the new construction. There's the, the block with the windows for the uh, office and workroom and AV storage area. Um, and the gymnasium flooring, they surprised me how quick they, they demolished and got that down. So the, new, the old bleachers and the old floor are gone. Um, and the new floor, that's the new floor in. They, they finished it up against the wall where they're putting the, the bleachers. Um, to the left, and then you can see the new ball goals in there that are retractable. The old ones weren't retractable, so they're, they're happy to have the, the new retractable ones. So that's looking really good. Um, so later in your agenda, uh, of course, you have a, a change order, and I know mm -hmm. you're not used to change orders, but th th this is a big number, so I certainly wanted to explain it. Um, and I, So this is the back of... Um, Clark Morris, and you see where I have written concessions building there. That was the building that we were just looking at, the very first slide that we looked at. Um, and where the word trailer is, is of course, now a classroom trailer that, that is being used. It's very old and, and a you know, wooden trail going out, going out to the classroom. And then you can see the new road. If, if you remember, and it's probably, you've got a lot going on, um, but we put in a new road very late in the bid. Um, was an alternate. It was the, the code reviewers wanted us to, to put a road back there and a, and a hydrant and things of that nature. We got it in as an alternate late. On the days that we brought that bid pack, uh, the bids to you, Rising Sun, if you see the highlighted one there, um, I think it's $108,000. Uh, of course, we met with Dr. Gillum and the, the administration. And we were all concerned about that number, especially since it's the highest one in all those other alternates. You know, you, can, you can't mix the alternate of another. <laughs> Contractor, we, we wish we could. So we were concerned enough that we rec um, we suggested that you not take that and that we revisit that work. Um, so it's work that you would have paid for at that point and had. And right now you don't have any. Well, we had to change order number one, but it was a net zero cost. So you so you haven't spent any contingency money yet. So we just said, well, let's let's revisit this, try to save money on it, come back and and pay for it later. Well, that's where we are. But with that said, we also came back and revisited some other issues. One, the trailer. Once this renovation is, is done, um, there was few additional discussion that the trailer will no longer, it, it can go away. So in the change order quote that we have from the contractor, you can see there's no trailer there. And Dr. Gillum suggested, among others, let's put some additional parking back there. So the road you see coming in now has parking. So we, so we did additional paving, and it's right there beside the concessions. And now I'll, I'll go back to the original one there. See, the trailer's there, and it's just a road coming back through there. There's also a fire hydrant and things of that nature going back in there. Um, so in the change order, um, there is the work for this additional work, the road demolishing the trailer and the utilities associated with it. Uh, that, that all gets sodded and seeded and cleaned up and graded and uh, nice paint, so it'll all look nice and finished back there. Um, and I believe that is the that is the part that is the eighty five thousand. So you got more work for and uh, what was that eighty five. $85,637 compared to the 108, and you got more work. So the district saved money by re delay, re delaying the alternate and accepting it later. 
There's also, as part of this change order, additional pavement and parent pickup drive, 19,917. We discussed it early on, and I, sh I showed some pictures of it. Um, as soon as we put it in, um, Dr. Gillum and others said, look, let's get a second lane in there. Let's make this thing wider. And evidently it worked pretty well, because as, as soon as they put it in, it seemed to flow a lot better. So that's the second half of the change order. And of course, I'm referring to an agenda item that you have later to go ahead and explain. How many parking spaces, Tony? It's just about 11, I think. Okay. And I, don't, I think it's about 11. There's 11. Oh, I'm sorry, right here? Yeah. Back here? I think there's just the eight. Line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's, it's just eight additional parking spaces. Now, other people, that's how many are striped. More people could park back there. Uh, but it's a turnaround area. It's a loading area. And it's a place where a fire truck can drive all the way back in there as well. Very important. So, yeah. So what are we going to do with the trailer that we're moving? Right now, it's the contractor is Demolition. throwing away. I don't, I don't think anybody, I, I could be wrong. I don't think anybody wants it. I think it gets demoed and it's it's had its seen its years. Yeah, over the over years, those get uh, get pretty weak structurally, and if you try to relocate them and move them, they're difficult to do anything with. So yeah. So we demolish it and then haul it off. And that's in, and that's now in the that was not in the original bid. So that whole process is now in this change order. I just want to make sure it wasn't something we could sell and get some money out of. <laughs> <laughs> so that is it for Clark Moore's. Southern dugouts. Uh, not a lot has happened since the last time we met, and that's because we all decided to stop at a point and let the kids play on all the fields. Uh, but I did go around this morning and take the latest pictures. You can see grass is growing. It's, it's, it's basically the roofs and the doors. It just Once the kids are done playing this year, they're going to come back and do the roofs and the doors. Um, that was Madison Southern uh, first base softball. I'm sorry, Madison Central first base softball. This is the other side of that same dugout. Now we're looking over at third base softball at Central. And you can see they've, they've just got the temporary roofs on there. Um, now we're going over to the central baseball, and again, just waiting on the on the roofs. Um, that's the first base side, and that's the other side of that structure. Um, so they're working well for, for temporary use. Uh, that is the uh, home third base side with the storage um, to the right of it there at central. If we go to southern, of course, that's the first base uh, dugout and storage at Madison Southern Baseball. There's the third base. Go to the softball at Southern, and there's the home first base side with the storage, and there's the third base softball dugout. So, are we painting the inside of those yes. and putting like a central in the side of it? Oh, Southern well, inside, or we don't have any we don't have any branding or or logos or anything. I guess you all could certainly come back and do anything you want to to that yeah, nature. But project. yeah, mm. yeah. But it's it's currently not in the plans. It's a good okay. idea though. Activities building. So if you're, um, this is kind of a work in progress, and as you're already aware, a lot of work is being handled by, by the district. Um, but as I was out there, I noticed that Madison County has started their part, so work has begun on the activities building. Of course, uh, we took bids on the concrete part of that pre-engineered building, and it's, that's something else that's in your agenda later, and that was a good price. I, I was thinking about 150, which is what one of the bids were, but Olympic, who I've worked with before, by the way, and I was working on jobs right now, a concrete job in Boyle County there, so I, I feel good with the bids. I, I would recommend that. But that project has started, so, and the owner's taking care of this, relocating some electrical to get out of the way of the building. Um, so now let's go to the Ignite Academies, South Campus. Um, brick is pretty much done. Um, and that I noticed that window is not in, but most of the, most of the other windows are in. Um, Storage buildings, it's, it's about as good as a storage building could look out for, <laughs> for lab spaces. But uh, there's the other side. You can see they've got concrete in now um, and bollards. It's, it's really beginning to take a finished look. Overhead doors, closing the place up. Um, you can look at that from the inside. You can see how, you know, not a lot of opportunity for, for light in those labs with the tall walls and high bays. So we put some uh, glass in the door there and the sectional doors. Um, as we walk around the building, you can see from the outside just how it's really coming, coming together, closing up. All the gaps are filling in. All the windows being put in. There's, of course, the front entry. They're waiting for that glass canopy on the, on the entry there to the very last, of course. Um, inside, they're ready to, 
to paint all that and put the, uh, uh, the aluminum storefront is. That's looking at where, where the marketing will be. Uh, gymnasium, they're waiting on the gym floor, but almost everything else inside the gymnasium is done. Uh, they want to acclimate the, that wood to the, to the HVAC, which is not turned on yet, which is something else I'll talk about in just a minute. Terrazzo's going in. They usually wait till that to right at the very last. You can see how shiny it looks, and they haven't even ground it yet. I thought this was a neat picture because, of course, facing Ferristown, the the one area there that that is, uh, you know, not a, or not uh, trans or it's translucent. You can see Ferristown in the in the background there, and then of course the uh, uh, the we call it sandblasted glass above there, basically, so that you don't get direct sun coming in there. But uh, that's in the culinary lab, and it's 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 going to be really nice. So I'm going to jump to the north campus, and then we can talk about both tech centers there. Um, there's a little bit of a washed out picture from, you know, the corner. And at the corner, of, of course, now they have the, uh, the masonry sign up, which will say Ignite Academy uh, North Campus. That pole will not be there. <laughs> That's a temporary pole, so that <laughs> we wouldn't do that to you. Um, and the storage building there as well. Uh, of course, there's more labs, so there's more storage here. You all have potential for future addition at the, at the Berea. Uh, Night Academy South. You can see all the concrete is in there, um, and the overhead doors are on site. I think they're going to try to install those any day now. Uh, there's just a picture from uh, the side of the gym facing coals, and the concrete is in. Uh, they're ready to put down topsoil. In fact, they're spreading a lot of topsoil around the site now, and uh, they've got the pay. I believe they have the pavers scheduled to come in next week to put some paving down. Um, there's just a close-up shot of the front of the lobby there where you can see, or the back side of the front lobby. Um, there's walking around to the front. And there's from the inside. I always like that picture, so I keep showing it. <laughs> uh, and the new tile is in. That, that is inside the lobby. That's where it will again say, you know, Ignite Academy North Campus. And similar to uh, Berea, there's the area where you would go down the corridor to get into the labs and marketing and offices on the left and uh, marketing display on the right. And the welding labs, those, those are going to be quite a showcase lab, but uh, they've got a lot of the pipes in now. Those are all gases coming from, you know, there's a storage area out back that holds all the acetylene and, and different welding gases that will come into the building. So everybody's excited about that. So that's the uh, that's all the projects I put the two I put the Ignite South um, and Ignite North uh, together because I want to talk to you about the schedule um, because I, last time oh smiles and, and laughs last time I came before you we were, uh, you'd asked about touring touring in uh, June and July and I told you that we'd talked about June 14th um, so anytime after that you could tour well. After that meeting, we, we started having meetings just about every week, you know, every other week at each center. Um, you know, we had one a couple of weeks ago last week. We're going to have one next week, and, and the next week we started having conversations about June 14th, and I started the meeting with June 14th, and all the contractors started backtracking. They're struggling with their mechanical contractors to get the air going, and if we don't, that's a critical path item in construction. If you don't get the air going, then the finishes can't get done and you can't hang ceiling tiles and things of that nature. Um, we've talked to them about making a priority to put, you know, get areas where the owner can move storage into like the storage buildings and into some of the big labs. So some of that can go ahead and start happening maybe within a few weeks. Um, but they started saying July 16th. So we spent the whole quite adversarial hour long meeting or more talking about the schedule. Uh, Mr. Cash, what happened? I don't see Mr. Cash tonight, but he, he, he wasn't very happy, and none of us were very happy uh, about it. And we kept backtracking and saying June 14th, June 14th. Um, they had subs kind of arguing back and forth, and I'm not trying to make this a negative thing, but the reality is at June 14th, you might be able to walk through the building, but you'd not be able to have class in there. Um, so you may not want to set up your tours for the end of June. You may want to set up your tours for the end of July. Um, to let you all know, we've had Dr. Gillum's been pretty stern with me and them about their payments, potential damages, all the things that you have in your power to 
show that you all have the authority over them. And we've had those discussions. I've recent, received some emails back from the contractor saying that they're putting people on site, they're staying late, they're working weekends, and we're going to watch that. Um, so just know we're pushing them daily. Um, and I, I know Matt, I, Madison County's not happy about this. No, we're uh, having and, class in there in August. So. Yeah, well, I don't. All I, I got to say. Yeah. Yeah. Chairs and tables. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you've got students that are supposed to be in this building having classes. And we have said all along mm -hmm. we wanted those students to see those buildings mm -hmm. before they had to, you know, we wanted to, that was kind of part of our marketing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps getting pushed back and pushed back. And I'm not going to be shocked if. We don't come back, and oh, we can't even get in there in August. Personally, I would be shocked with that right now, especially since, well, our meetings have amped up a little bit over the past month, <laughs> um, if, if you can imagine, and and the discussions that are going back and forth. And I and I don't want to say, you know, Jason Akers with Rising Sun, um, I think he's tried really hard. He has some subs that are. An, uh, an obstacle to critical path items. And when you can't get those critical path items done, other people can't do their work. So, and the biggest thing right now is the air conditioning. The air, not having air in the building slows down a very critical path of doing the finishes and the flooring and, and things of that nature. Um, so that's, that's the discussions we've had. Please know that I'm talking to them daily. And I've been on the site a lot lately. Yeah. It's not an equipment issue, it's a personnel issue of getting workers Contractor. or contractors or do we, ha do we have the air conditioning equipment? Yes. Okay. They, they have the equipment now. When we, went to a, when we went to the first meeting after I met with you all last time, we were surprised to find out that some of the th plumbing fixtures and water heaters were not even ordered. Why? We have no idea. Everybody at this point had been assuming that they were ordered and stored. You hadn't paid for them, but still, things like that should have been ordered months and months and months ago. Um, but duct work and things like that have been on the site, sitting there, and we've taken pictures of it, and we've asked questions, why is the duct work still sitting there? It's been a manpower issue. Um, and they've, they've told us on the site, and I, you know, we're not giving excuses, but they can't hire people. They can't, they can't find people. Um, but again, they've known for a long time where we wanted to be at a certain time, um, and I think there, there, there are things that they could have overcome, especially a couple of the subcontractors um, that they have, if they just would have planned better six months ago, not a month ago. Um, so I'm working with the owner uh, of the company of Rising Sun, talking daily just about uh, to make sure that he's, he's putting all these efforts forward. And a lot has happened, you know, those overhead doors and things like that, they weren't there. And, you know, things are, are popping on site. So um, we're so pushing you're, them. you're overseeing to make sure that those future items that need to be ordered, that, like you just said, should have been ordered a we, long time ago? We've gone back, and, with, and that's one of the things I've been talking to the owner about is what other surprises of materials are there? Because mm -hmm. I know they did have some lead. We talked about HVAC yeah. equipment being a lead time item 10 months ago. But, but they've had all that equipment for a long time now, and it's been sitting there. They just haven't had the men put it in place. Nobody came to us and said, hey, we have a problem here, or that this is going to be a problem. Um, and I think it snuck up on the GC, too. And again, I'm not defending the GC. That's, that's their job is to kind of to, to watch over those people. But I know that he has talked to those subs and, and, and pushed them, um, and he wasn't happy either <laughs> at these meetings. Um, but I am continuing to talk to him. We're pushing it every day. We're going to watch. We've discussed watching daily, you know, not just during the day, but in the afternoon and on Saturday. Are they, are they showing the effort that we need to see uh, to finish these projects up? Because you, you all need to get in there. I know the Rising Sun has a lot of other projects around the state. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that they're not prioritizing other buildings that started mm -hmm. after us. Right before us, you know, we we need to make sure they're they're staying on their schedule with us, just as important as they are with somebody else. Because I know I, they've got several projects going on. I agree. Well, they're already off schedule. Yeah. 
Right. I mean, we're we're getting to the point that we need to move equipment in. Mm -hmm. We got teachers that need to come in. One of these schools is a brand new school mm -hmm. that we're hiring teachers for. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to get in, get set up before we even bring a kid in. Mm -hmm. So this is we're getting critical. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's time. I agree. We appreciate your effort to continue to help. <laughs> yes, yeah. that. Well, no, that's the okay, messenger. and, and uh, I, I don't. It's not just an effort. He needs to make sure it happens. Yeah. <laughs> so we appreciate you holding their nose to the Well, I, I'm trying. Believe me, I'm, I'm trying. I, Dr. Gillum and I both had the discussion of if we knew how to weld, we'd go in there and <laughs> help them do something. That's just not our expertise, and we've got our hands full yeah. with, with other stuff. We know amazing uh, kind of students in their welding. <laughs> yeah, maybe we could hire some of them. But we're going to stay on. And that's it for the construction report. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Any questions? Thank you, Tom. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right. Next up, we have our action agenda. Next up is 7A, which is to approve the fiscal year 23 site-based allocations. Phil, do you want to say anything on this? Sure. Uh, yeah, this, we do this every year. Our SBDM allocations are, are set by formula that's consistent with state formula. Uh, it's based on projected student enrollments, tells the number of uh, uh, teachers and staff that we assign to each school. So what you see right there is just that breakdown of staff. And then uh, uh, in addition to that, we, uh, the, we provide $140 per pupil funding to the schools to be able to spend on supplies or additional staff if the uh, uh, schools should uh, choose to do so, and that's under the purview of the school council. So. Anyone have any questions? All right, can I have a motion to approve the fiscal year 23 site-based allocations? I'll make the motion. A motion by Ms. Burford. I'll second. Second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next up is 7B, which is to approve the submission of SSR form. Um, yeah, this is our school security forms, uh, uh, school security funds. It is to pay for, um, there's a limited number of things that, that, will, that, uh, that you can use this fund, that funding for. Specifically, uh, this, these right here are some items that we were going to do uh, anyway. Uh, that actually, it's reimbursement for some items that we'd already done. Front door cameras uh, will not cover any cameras through the school, only front door cameras, those access panels and some of that. So as we've done upgrades to that, uh, this is a chance to get the funding back through that uh, through the SSR program. This is our second or third submission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I think this will be our final submission. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know uh, Mr. Woods and Mr. Cash have worked hard <coughs> trying to find mm -hmm. things that we can replace and that need yes. upgrading mm -hmm. so we can take advantage of this. Sure, so. yep. Yeah, and the General <laughs> Assembly appropriated money in two different pots and so uh, and it's specific to time there, so and it was spe very specific to just to this, these types of things. Can I have a motion to approve the school security funds request as presented? So moved. Uh, motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cool. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next up is 7C, which is to approve the change order number two for Clark Morris Middle School. I think Tony talked about it earlier. This is the driveway around the back for the fire mm -hmm. truck and the fire hydrant and removing the trailer. Yeah, and it, and it also, he, he focused on the paving, but it also does include the, uh, uh, the, the fire hydrant itself mm -hmm. and the water pipes and some of those things. And that was a, this was a codes issue that uh, after it was all developed and everything, we had to put in an additional fire hydrant and uh, additional access for fire trucks. So, Any questions? Right. Can I have a motion to approve the change order number two for Clark Morris Middle School as presented? So moved. Motion by Ms. Burford. Second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up is 7D, which is to award a bid for Madison Southern High School Concrete Slab. This is for the activity building that Tony talked about over at uh, Madison Southern. And I think we actually talked about it last meeting. We did. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's uh, to do the excavating and, and pour all of the concrete for that, uh, for that building. This was for $87,700. Those questions? bids were all over the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what, what you're seeing in construction right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, the right lowest in. bid was half of the next bid, and that was half of the highest bid. So mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah. wow. Can I have a motion to award the bid of the concrete slab at Madison Southern High School to Olympic Construction in the amount of $87,700? So moved. Motion by Ms. Cobb. 
I'll second. Second by Ms. Brock. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next up is 7E to approve one Madison Southern High School football assistant coach position. And I think this is going to be paid for by the Southern High School football boosters. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, one of these coaching positions that we do from time to time, the boosters the program would like an extra one, and the boosters agree to pay for it. And typically it's, you know, you're talking $700,000, $1,500, something like that. Yeah. Any other questions? Can I have a motion to approve a Madison Southern High School assistant football coach position for the 2022-2023 school year to be paid for by Madison Southern High School football boosters? So moved. Motion by Ms. Cool. I'll second. Second by Ms. Brock. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next up is 7F uh, to create, ratify a 1.0 teacher coach. Uh, this will be paid for with ESSER funds. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll speak to that real quickly. This is the, uh, specifically, this would be an additional math coach, is what we're uh, requesting. We're our scale-up work on the uh, MDC initiative that our math coaches presented on and talked about, our scale-up piece, um, the way it is designed is that as schools, and, and actually school staffs uh, uh, get to select whether or not they're a part of this, uh, this work. So over uh, time, as we've added schools, we started out, we add schools. Now the design on it was to be able to maintain the number of coaches that we have because as staff um, become used to the work, they're, they're able to kind of sustain themselves. Uh, but with the pandemic and having to miss uh, you know, a lot of work, and, and by the way, a lot of our coaches in the last couple of years stepped back into the classroom and did a lot of different things working with students. So that work kind of slowed down. So we were not able to remove a coach and move them to a new one. We have a new school that wants to come on. Um, and uh, in order to accommodate the additional school, we're going to need an additional coach to be able to service that. Uh, because it's related to pandemic pieces, we can pay for it with our ESSER funding, so it has no impact whatsoever on general fund, so it doesn't impact our ability to spend money anywhere else, uh, just simply on our use it, utilizing our ESSER funds. So in order to accommodate that additional school, we would like to uh, add that additional coach. So that would make six coaches, right? That would be six math coaches, yes, mm -hmm. in that work. Any other questions? Can I have a motion to create or ratify a 1.0 teacher slash coach position to be paid for with ESSER funds? So moved. Motion by Ms. Cobb. I'll second. Second by Ms. Burford. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next up is 7G is to approve the Frisky MOA. Uh, this is to approve a memorandum of agreement with the Cabinet Health and Family Services for a Frisky. Uh, anybody got any questions? Mm -hmm. All right, can I have a motion to approve the memorandum of agreement with the Cabinet for Health and Family Services for Family Resource Youth Service Centers for 2022 through 2024? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cole. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next up is 7H, which is to approve the request for a kindergarten early entrance. Uh, you want to say anything on this? Or? Well, I can. Yeah. Uh, of course, we have uh, compulsory attendance laws, and it's specific to age. Students have to be a certain age in order to get into uh, kindergarten, and that's so we can receive state funding on it. In certain circumstances where students are significantly advanced, uh, not, just, not just a little bit ahead, but they are significantly advanced, uh, it qualifies for a grade skip, and there's, there's regulations on that. Uh, we screen those. We get a lot of applicants' uh, requests every year. We screen those, and for students who might meet that, um, obviously, we uh, recommend that they go ahead and do that. This year, we have three. Typically, it's zero or one uh, in the typical year, but we, we did have three this year So uh, that actually get through. So we recommend we go ahead and, and move those students on. Once these kids get in the system, say that they don't actually, mm -hmm. you know, it's more than they can actually handle. Does anybody monitor that to see, or do they just go right on up through it like a normal I'm not aware of any that has not been very successful. So they, they <laughs> yeah. are above and beyond. 90th percentile, the, the general rule is 90th percentile at the grade above. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about a student who's a 90th percentile of a kindergartner. We would talk about when they enter kinder. we're going to let them come into kindergarten and they'd be at 90, 90th percentile of a first grader. Yeah. So okay. that's, that's what you're talking about. They're yeah. real. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. 
Can I have a motion to accept the superintendent's recommendation and approve the three requests for early entrance into the kindergarten as presented? So moved. All right, I'll go motion by Ms. Cobb and second by Ms. Cole. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next up is 7I, which is to approve the 2022-2023 KEDC membership. And yeah, this is one of our co-op memberships that does have a fee there, 5000 and some dollars. And the benefit to, um, to the KEDC membership is it puts us in the, uh, uh, the KPC purchasing co-op, which we get a lot of our food contracts through the KPC food contract or co-op uh, utilizing that bidding so we save uh, way more in um, in savings than we do in the cost of the membership so it's a it's a very good deal for our district plus uh, KDC does a lot of other professional services for us that, that uh, it's part of the membership as well Don't have any questions can I have a motion to approve the 2022-2023 membership in the Kentucky Educational Development Corporation? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cole. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next up is 7J, which is to approve the Clark Moores Middle School Food Service POs. Uh, I think there was several POs that were close comparison, and so we kind of bundled them all together. Uh, yes, it was it was uh, some several small purchases for uh, to outfit the uh, the kitchen there at Clark Moore's as we're doing the renovation, and we bought several items from the same vendor and exceeded thirty thousand. And so even though it was on bid, uh, thirty thousand and um, it, it requires board approval. And so it, since it was all from the same vendor, we're doing that just to be on the safe side. So Mr. Anderson's here; he can answer any questions you have. But it's general cafeteria equipment. You want to have any questions for Mr. Anderson? Uh, all right. There was just so everyone knows, there was seven POs and they all totaled up thirty-one thousand dollars and seventy-one cents. So, um, so can I have a motion to approve the Clark Morris Middle School Food Service purchase orders? So moved. Motion by Miss Burford. I'll second. Second by Miss Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next up is seven K, which is to approve the purchase of cafeteria shelving. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will. I'll mention just something real quick on this because it is the the shelving piece. But just so, uh, just to be very clear, that the uh, food service funds go into the food service account, which you all see each month as we look at the um, at the budget numbers. Uh, that those funds in that food service account can only be spent for food service items. So um, over the past few several years, uh, you all know that we've been able to. Uh, operate at a profit on our food service, which is which is somewhat unique, uh, and we've we've mentioned that several times. So, when it comes to uh, being in that position, we um, you know we want to make sure that our schools are equipped. We we bought the uh, new cafeteria tables um, a few months ago. Now we're looking at upgrading all of our storage rooms with uh, with additional shelving to make it easier for our uh, uh, create a better work environment for our cafeteria staff. So. That's what this purchase is, to purchase across the board. And, and I think in your packet there, you had pictures of the, the types of shelving that we're doing. And uh, that's, that's what we're looking at. I think it's, uh, yeah, 15, 15 schools, and that doesn't include Clark Moore's because we can't measure for it yet because, uh, well, you all saw the picture of the, of the yeah. kitchen. So. And it says it left out Waco and Daniel Boone because they already had new shelving? Show. Yes. That's pretty new shelving, right? Yes, brand new. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. We're in this year. Very good. Anything else? Any, any other questions? Can I have a motion to approve the purchase of the shelving for the 15 schools as presented? Second. Motion by Ms. Brock. I'll second. second. I'll give a second to Ms. Burford. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, next up is 7L, which is to approve the copy paper purchase. And I believe this was a little supply demand issue here. Yes, uh, you know, our, our supply chains have been just completely disrupted over the last uh, year or two, uh, and this is a good case in point. Uh, Dr. Brumball's here. He's, he's done the, uh, uh, he's worked with the vendors on this. Uh, typically, we, I think we usually bring this in April, um, the per paper purchase. We had nothing to bring in April because we couldn't get paper. Uh, they would not sell us a truckload of paper. So, uh, uh, because the uh, 
the, the, uh, there was, I think, a strike at one of the manufacturing facilities, and that put a big backlog in the paper. So right now, we are able to get one truckload coming in this summer. We typically order three or four. Uh, I'm confident we will have paper, additional paper to get us through the year, but we're going to have to delay our, our order piece because we, don't, we can't get too far out, and uh, you know, they, can't, they will not guarantee us paper to, to be delivered at a certain time at a certain price. Uh, Does that beyond affect the one cost? Truckload. Because typically we get three trucks at one time, and it uh, th yes, it uh, okay. the buying in bulk didn't impact the price. The shortage has impacted yeah. oh, okay. the price. Yes, uh, so uh, it's just a again, it is a um, we're seeing our, our uh, uh, distribution channels just really um, um, you know in in kind of a little bit of turmoil, I guess, <laughs> lack of a better word. When you have the the strike that comes in, and I can you know I can talk more about paper, but uh, I don't think we need to. Uh, so anyway, 840 cases, and uh, you can see there 35 thousand dollars truckload of paper. And we'll do this same way. It'll come to the post building. We'll yes. distribute it out to the schools yes. as mm -hmm. each one of them orders their certain yeah. amount. And Dr. Brumball's back there. If y'all have any questions regarding the conversations he's had with manufacturers and suppliers. I just appreciate your work, Dr. Mm -hmm. Frumbaugh, for what you're <laughs> trying to get us the best deal you can. So can I have a motion to approve the purchase and PA, PO of one truckload of white copy paper, which is 840 cases, for $35,616 with Action Business Suppliers? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And next up, we have our superintendent's report. All right. Well, thank you. So uh, we're in May, and May is a month filled with lots of recognitions and celebrations. Uh, right now, we are in uh, its uh, Nurses Appreciation Week, and yesterday specifically was School Nurse Appreciation Day. So uh, certainly at this time of year, and the, 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 you, you all noticed the uh, recognition that we read about the, uh, uh, the, the health services piece. Certainly, we appreciate our nurses for what they've been doing, and we've mentioned them several times, but one more time. Uh, last week was Teacher Appreciation Week. May the 1st was School Principal, uh, School Principal's Day. So, um, and April 21st, uh, one of my favorite days, Administrative Professionals Day, uh, and we appreciate all the work that those folks do. So, uh, you know, all of these times are very special times of recognition, and uh, we want to say one more time, we appreciate each of these groups for what they do for our students and for our community. And I also want to say thank you to our folks that came out um, last, April, last Tuesday, I think April 26th, to our strategic planning event. Uh, we had several community members there, and we really appreciate them being there. And most of our district leader, leadership positions uh, participated in that. And also our superintendent team task force was there uh, facilitating that program. It was a very nice evening. Uh, as for me, we've wrapped up uh, our school allocation meetings, as evidenced by the school out the uh, allocation uh, piece right there that we approved tonight. Uh, we finished those up in April, and for the past couple of weeks, I've been out at schools uh, doing my evaluation site visits, and it's been great to be in the schools, visit classrooms with the principals, and, and uh, talk about the, the good work that our schools are doing with their principals. Uh, I've also had the opportunity to speak to several groups uh, over the last few weeks. I spoke to uh, Berea, at the Berea City Council meeting on April 19th. I got to uh, speak to the Whitaker Bank Board on April 27th, Richmond Rotary Club on May the 4th, and the retired teachers on Wednesday of this week, so yesterday. Uh, and then also I went down to uh, uh, Somerset Community College for a KCTCS meeting talking about partnerships as we look at expanding career and technical education. Uh, had that meeting on Monday. Um, and then... Um, uh, as far as uh, other things within our schools, uh, you know, we're winding down. But this week, uh, we've been involved in our KSA state assessments. And, uh, of course, our schools will be winding things up next week and, um, and then finishing those end-of-the-year activities that the students and teachers really enjoy. And then our big end-of-the-year event, graduation. Uh, graduation ceremonies will be held at EKU, Madison Central, on Friday, May 27th, Madison Southern. Saturday, May 28th. That's my superintendent report. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, comments from the board. I just wanted to say how impressed I was with the community and the businesses that showed out, you know, stepped out during teachers appreciation. I don't know if it's more or whatever, but it was seemed like it was more exposed and there was more people doing things for the teachers. I mean, it was on Facebook just constantly mm -hmm. and things do 
other businesses were doing, and and I've seen people coming and getting tea and stuff and taking them to schools. It was just really impressive to see how they were stepping up and doing those things. We do appreciate the teachers and nurses and administrators and principals. <laughs> All of that. All of them. <laughs> I will add that I appreciate the invitation to the um, strategic planning session. It was um, very efficient. It was well thought out. The superintendent and team task force was fantastic. There was never a moment where we were sitting around not doing anything. So it was a good use of our time. I think everyone enjoyed it. I think Lori and I had a, I mean, it was very evident that everyone was there for what is best for our students. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was it was great, and was I, really I thank nice. you for our invitation yeah, to because that. Because the last Mom. time we did that was right mm -hmm. before COVID. Yes, and we never got to do to implement all that with mm -hmm. what came out of that mm -hmm. meeting. So I, I think this was it was. Really I would like to hear the results though mm -hmm. of everything that we put up on the walls. So yeah. if we can get a follow up on that, we I will would do. love that. Yep. And how we're That's implementing kind of, all the ideas that all sure. of our principals and our mm -hmm. community leaders all yep. put forth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'll, do, I'll just say, too, uh, back on the, the teacher appreciation. Um, I, I, scrolling through Facebook, I, I noticed um, there were several comments from students, and this is going to tear me up, about how wonderful their teachers are. Yeah. And I think what struck me the most about that is it, it's more, and this kind of goes along with, with what everybody's doing. It's more than just teaching these students math or reading. And I was reading these comments and I thought, you know, this is about life. These teachers, everybody, they're changing lives. So you guys are affecting the lives of these students. And I just appreciate everything that you do. And then I know the last couple of years, it's really been hard. So thank you all for what you do. I'll stop now. <laughs> well said, Lori. You don't have anything else? All right. Um, next up, we will enter into executive session as required by state law for the preliminary discussion of the superintendent's evaluation per KRS 156.557-1,6C. So can I have a motion to enter into executive session as required by state law for the preliminary discussion of superintendent's evaluation? I'll make the motion. Motion by Ms. Burford. I'll second. Second by Ms. Brock. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Okay. All right, can I have a motion to come out of executive session? So move. Motion by Ms. Burford, second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, next up is to approve the superintendent's summative evaluation. Uh, each year, KDE requires the board to have an evaluation of the superintendent. The categories which were evaluated were strategic leadership, instructional leadership, cultural leadership, human resource leadership, <coughs> managerial leadership, collaborative leadership, and influential leadership. Uh, Dr. Gillum has shown over the past year that he is exemplary in each of these categories. He has excelled in his leadership within the school system and within and in his leadership within our community. So we've all talked together, we all filled out forms and discussed and we've decided that Dr. Gillum is, is exemplary in every category and we cannot appreciate and thank him enough for the work that he does for us and our community mm -hmm. every single day, yeah. day and night as I can say. So with that, can I have a motion to approve the superintendent's summative evaluation? So moved. Motion by Ms. Cool. I'll second. Second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Uh, next up is to adjourn. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll second. Motion by Ms. Burford. Second by Ms. Brock. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.